In the last video, I built a RISC-V CPU from scratch. But let's be real, it was too simple. Basically, like, unusual. This time, my goal was clear. Make the holy core reliable. Turning it into a real microcontroller. Kinda like an Arduino. But with a few extra steps. Okay guys, we are so back. How did humanity go from these computers to this? Literal flying machines controlled by thinking rocks, otherwise known as computers. Now, I still don't have an answer to this question, but I did make my own CPU, which is very, very not performant, yet it is better than an Arduino. So I guess you can say it's not that bad. And now it's about what I added. How did I make the core an actual CPU that you can use to build cool project with? Because remember, right now the holy core is just a glorified LED controller. So in this video, you'll see the painful but glorious process of making the holy core fully RISC-V compliant. And guess what? You can actually learn to do it yourself right now, easily. But more on that later. To make the holy core a real microcontroller core, I had to fix some bugs, like some big painful problems. And so yeah, I kind of figured that there was a lot of things that were kind of, you know, out of reach. First one was the cursed cache. Back in the FPGA version, we built a basic cache system with custom Axie controllers and all that jazz. And it kind of worked, but it was really, really trash because it was caching everything uncontrollably. So you had absolutely zero control over its behavior. So you had to do some weird shenanigans to make it work. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? And thinking about it, it turns out most microcontrollers don't even have a cache system. So a great option to get rid of this problem was to simply get rid of the cache, or at least make it optional. Now the Holy Core has this fancy cache system. In theory, it's pretty powerful. In practice, I really don't use it. But if you are curious about how this works under the hood, you have to know about a CPU mechanism that allows dumb software instructions to have direct control over how the hardware itself behaves, the CSR. Control and status registers are like magic knobs inside the CPU that you can tweak with special RISC-V instructions defined in the ZICSR instruction. There is a big set of predefined CSRs to do a plethora of sh** like store performance instruction or act directly on hardware specific behaviors including stuff like defining which memory region is cached and which isn't using specific custom CSRs. Adding interrupts into the core was harder than building the core itself, to be honest. At some point, I even had to make my own interrupt controller cores and make them complain as well to some other specs. So, just what even is an interrupt? Simply put, it's when an external component screams at the CPU like, hey, I need your attention right now on this matter. When that happens, the CPU triggers something called a trap. But what it really means is just that it stops whatever it's doing and it jumps to a special piece of code called the trap handler. This piece of arbitrary code figures out what caused the trap by reading some registers. And then it deals with it however you want. Now, in RISC-V, traps live in the privileged specs. And my objective was to implement the bare minimum to support traps. And that was kind of painful. For someone like me, who doesn't even know how to use straps in software, wiring them in hardware was kind of building like a Swiss watch. Speaking of Swiss precision, how do you even know if your whole thing actually works? Well, with that many pieces in a puzzle, a single fail and the whole thing collapses like a house of cards. You can run some basic test benches. But that only proves the basics. To be sure it works in most age cases, I had to go full serious and boring mode with a very, very serious RISC-V verification suite called RISC-OFF. I was just tired of writing programs in hexadecimal, literally on paper, like some dumb look, look, cavemen. Look at this. Oh my God. Look at this. You know, notes. And I wanted to use C to write my program, but compiling from C is making sure the compiler will do everything to optimize the code, thus increasing the chances of encountering some weird ass H case that will make the whole core fail. 
Secondly, it looks very serious, making me look very employable. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, it looks serious. You gotta, you, you, you gotta admit. And guess what? When I first implemented the test, which was a nightmare as well, well, I ran the tests and every single one of them failed. Like even the add test, like adding two numbers together. Like how do you mess up adding two numbers together, man? That's when the suffering began. Hours of debugging, digging through the specs and using some advice from a guy on Reddit. But in the end, it worked. How professional is that? Which means now you can compile your favorite C program and it will just run. Theoretically, flawlessly. Hey, come on, baby! Come on! Yes! Come on! In simulation though. So how do you go from this pile of code that describes hardware logic to something that actually feels more like a real Arduino? You have to build a system on a chip, an SOC. You know, that's the name of the channel. The core by itself is dumb. Like any CPU, it's useless until you wire it up with some memory and some peripherals. So here's a little list of basic stuff we need to tinker with. Obviously some memory to store, like the program and the data, some GPIOs to mess around with LEDs and whatever I want to plug on the board, a UART controller so we have a console to interact with from our PC, and a bus interconnect, a clock, and some usual glue logic or whatever. This is nerdy stuff. That's basically it, alright? That's all we need to start with and, you know, have some basic interaction with the CPU. Later, sure we'll be able to throw in some i2c and spi but for now let's just keep it simple okay so we laid out the hardware but if you want to use it right now we'd have to manually poke every register like a caveman which is very not practical and it goes against the objective of having an easy to use arduino like platform which brings us to the next logical step having some drivers. Drivers are just a small piece of C or assembly code or whatever that acts as a clean low-level interface to the hardware. So I wrote some drivers and I wrote the holy core library and so with some drivers in place we can finally write a real program by importing the holy library and make a tiny C program. Then you can just hit compile, load the program onto the CPU's memory, release the CPU reset and boom! The CPU starts executing the program and a hello word pops up on the screen. And we can go further. Thanks to interrupts, we can now react to user inputs. And just like that, the holy core goes from a pile of HDL to a proper microcontroller that does more than just turning LEDs on and off. But here's yet another problem. Without a debugger, I'm basically coding blind. Meaning if there is a single bug being in hardware or in my software, that means hours of reverse engineering to figure out what went wrong. To counteract this problem, you have to give the user a proper debugging experience. So yeah, it's time to fix that. What I would like to do is to have some sort of Swiss army knife that would allow me to load the program, poke registers in the SOC, stop the program in mid-execution or at some arbitrary breakpoint that I set. That would be a huge update. So I dove into yet another rabbit hole and added a debug module to the core to support debugger features. This may be a little abstract at first, but RISC-V got us covered with yet another document to help us define how it should work. And yeah, after weeks of pain and questionable life choices, the holy core is now fully debuggable life. That's actually a huge upgrade for the user experience. It makes the whole thing feel less like a toy and like a real development platform. Like as I said before, it's, it's looking very professional, isn't it? Thanks again for all of the insane support and for trusting me on this adventure with the holy core. If you want to dive deeper into the concepts, you can grab the free and open source course that I already made. It takes you from zero to building your own core and running it on FPGA for free. You can have it right now. The link is in the description. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can buy these courses as fancy PDFs that I try to make <laughs> look as good as possible. And you also have an exclusive third edition of the course 
which takes you also into the in-depth notions that we saw in this video. If you really want to support the channel as well, the best way is simple. You just hit like and subscribe. It sounds small, but it really helps more than you think.